Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another Ask Ian Q&A on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, and today we're going back to Elbonia. So our question today comes from Tim on Patreon, who says, The great nation of Elbonia is looking to spin up a sniper program. What rifles do you attempt to sell them? And have I got this one? Uh, this is so... P.S. They know better than to adopt ZF-41 scopes. Crap. Okay, so... We're going to have to think this one through a little bit more. ZF-41 is just such an obvious answer that, okay, fair enough, that's too easy. So if, let me just recap the concept of Elbonia here, if you haven't seen the, some of the previous Elbonia questions, I think it's a really fun one. The idea is you are the traitorous defense minister of the nation of Elbonia, you're responsible for picking small arms, but you are actually trying to sabotage the national defense. But you can't be obvious that you're sabotaging the national defense. So you have to pick something that seems good on the surface, or is arguably good, and yet will actually be catastrophically bad. Uh, so snipers. ZF-41 again. Too easy. My thought is, if I wanted to sabotage a sniper program, there would be a couple things that I would want to do. The first thing is, I would want to minimize training. So I would highlight what are all the things that sound like a really good idea because they simplify the process of long-range shooting, and they take factors out of the equation so that you can shorten the training time for your snipers, and just everything is automated and done easily. Because the reality of long-range shooting is that it is complicated and it requires practice, understanding, and skill. And you can, you can like, do a, a short-term training session and get some guys who are pretty decent at moderate ranges, and maybe even at long ranges under favorable conditions. But when you put those guys into real stress, when the conditions are unfavorable, if it's now it's raining, the target's 800 meters away, you've been out in the bush for three days already, and you know, if you have to fire two shots, the enemy's going to figure out where you are and they're going to come kill you. That's the kind of place where a properly trained sniper has the, the mental fortitude and, and has, has a lot of these processes and variables factored into their head through so much practice that they don't have to think about them, but they'll do them right. Whereas a poorly trained or amateur long-range shooter or sniper is going to just fold. They're going to make mistakes and they're going to fail. And if I'm trying to sabotage a sniper program, I want to set up that. I want a program that's like the modern Russian army of snipers, where it looks really good on paper and everyone thinks it's great, and when it actually comes to, to serious operations, they just completely fall apart. So the way I would do that, I mean, first off, if it's an option, I'd, like, I'd buy uh, tracking point rifles. Like, equip the entire program with first-generation tracking point rifles, where you don't even need to learn anything about drop because it's got a laser, and it's got a calculator, and it'll do the whole thing for you, and you just hold down the trigger and kind of wiggle the rifle around until the crosshair sits on the target, and boom, then it fires. Neglecting to mention that it doesn't do anything about windage, which is a huge issue when you get beyond a couple hundred meters. Now, I don't think tracking points, like, they're, I don't, are they still in business? I'm honestly not sure if they're still around, but I'm going to assume that they're probably too expensive for Elbonia anyway. And so my backup plan is something like this. This is a Russian scope that is actually mechanically very similar to the American ART scopes, the Auto Ranging Telescope from Vietnam. And the concept here is it simplifies the whole process. It makes long-range shooting far easier because there is a BDC cam, a ballistic drop compensator, which is to say there's a, it's, it's a contoured cam in the scope where you click it to a certain range and it automatically elevates the scope enough to accommodate for bullet drop at that range. Well, on this and on the art, that is tied to the magnification dial. And it's this brilliant idea, cue the good idea fairy, that the farther away the target is, the, the more magnification you're going to need, and you just tie those two things together. And you can include a known size box in the scope. And so let's say it's shoulder width, like torso size of a human. And so now you don't even need to know what the range is. You simply find your humanoid target, you adjust the scope magnification until the box fits around the target, and then it's automatically set the BDC for you, and you just hold center on the target and fire, and presto, you'll make a hit. Which all sounds really good, and it's a way 
it's not necessarily a hindrance. Um, it can be. You certainly have issues like, well, what if my target's only 300 meters away, but he's not conveniently standing full profile, and I just have a little view of something that I need to hit? Or I'm not shooting at a human. What if I'm trying to shoot at the wheel of a vehicle, or the observation port on a bunker? Well, now my, like, that that auto size thing isn't necessarily all that helpful, and maybe I want 9 power magnification at 300 meters. Well, now my scope has automatically set its drop to 900 meters, and there's no way for me to mechanically undo that. I have to now figure out in my head how much under the target do I have to hold if I'm shooting at actually, well, let's not say 300, let's make it fun. I'm actually shooting at 328 meters, and the scope set for 900, how, how do? That becomes a very difficult prospect in the field. Whereas if you had a if you don't try and skip the hard work, and you put in the proper time learning trajectory, learning ballistics, learning how to work with MILS or MOA, and, under, and set your scope, a shot like that becomes very simple. Oh, 300 yards, I know my drop at 300, I can set my magnification to whatever I need for a particular shot. If there's wind, I can compensate for it. If I'm at an angle, I can compensate for that. Um, Angle has a can play a fairly substantial role in in elevation adjustment if you're shooting upwards or downwards. Anyway, my goal for Elbonia as the traitorous defense minister is all, every excuse I can come up with to simplify their training program so that the snipers aren't really actually all that good once they get in the field. Now, if I want to double down on this, I would take these scopes, and then I would fit them on a multi-caliber interchangeable barrel rifle platform. And I think I can pass that off pretty well as both a cost savings and a modularity thing, and it expands the capabilities of the snipers. Like, here, you know, here we go. We can have a suppressed 300 blackout, or a suppressed 8.6 blackout, or a suppressed 9x39 uh, barrel for the sniper rifles, for urban operations and sneaky tactical stuff. And then we can use the same rifle platform and swap it out, and now we can have our 7.62 or 6.5 proper uh, rifle. Or maybe we go from a standard length, you know, a 308 or a 6.5 cartridge up to uh, a 338 Magnum sort of thing. This is our, our long range sniper uh, platform. But we keep the same scopes, and you know, it's no big deal. You just, uh, you just switch out the BDC cams for the proper cartridge, which is fine, but you know that inevitably people will forget to do it. They'll lose track of which cam is in in the scope. They'll mount, you know, they'll take a scope off of one rifle. We definitely want these to be quick detach scopes to encourage this sort of mistake making. They'll they'll pull the scope off of the the small caliber and put it on the big caliber, or vice versa, and won't realize it till they get out on the range and the first shot goes wildly. Who knows where? And nobody's really quite sure how to fix it. That's how I would try to sabotage the Elbonian Sniper Corps. So, anyway, Tim, I think that was a really fun question. To be fair, there are a lot of Elbonia questions that are like, eh, yeah, but the ones that are fun are the ones that really make you think about what's important and what works and what doesn't work in a particular weapon system. So thank you all for watching, hopefully you enjoyed that one. If you would like to have your own question answered in a Q&A video like this, please consider heading over to Utreon or Patreon, sign up to help support Forgotten Weapons, and once a month I will uh, post a request for Q&A questions over on both of those platforms.